A few videos back, I explained to you my approach to street photography and a little bit the philosophy behind it. And I wanted to do a follow up on that video anyway, but then last Sunday I saw the new video from Sean Tucker where he was going into his process of photography. And uh, I will leave a link in the description below. In this video, he introduced two terms to me that I didn't know before. One was uh, hunters and fishermen, so two different approaches on photography. What's up everyone, my name is Marcus from The M Photography and in today's video we will go a little bit further into these two terms and put them into um, the relation to my previous video that I did. So I will show you some examples of um, either more a hunter behavior or a fisherman behavior in photography. And also please stick around till the end of the video because I will be sharing with you the submissions I received for the street photography challenge I posted two videos ago where I ask everyone who wants to take part to shoot photos with repeating patterns. You've just watched my new intro, I'm so excited. I want to give a big shout out to Her Majesty's Sound, a friend of mine and musician here in Zurich who created this new audio for my channel. I will leave a link to his website down below if you want to check out more of his work. I hope you enjoyed the intro. Let's now start with the topic of the video. Hunters and Fishermen. So picture the hunter as being the type of photographer who uh, walks around or runs around the streets and hunts literally for their subjects, um, acts very quickly, goes, takes a shot, moves on. And the fisherman of being more the type of photographer who uh, stays in one spot and waits for something to happen at that spot or the subject to move into the frame and then take the shot. So I want to show you from the photos I took this year, um, examples for both behaviors and I will go a little bit more into um, my thoughts um, behind these two terms especially in relation to my type of photography um, so let's start with the fisherman so the fisherman for me is this approach that I think I prefer more than the hunter type um, I leave it up to you and I'm actually really curious in the comments um, once you've seen the examples that I will show you which type of photography you actually like more independently of me liking that approach more or not but it could be that you think that the results of the others are better um, but anyway let's start with the fisherman so the fisherman is when I go and find an interesting place. That can be either because of the architecture or some lines that I see in the scene or um, driven by light. And it is this approach where I have the scene under control, I become part of the scene and I will look for something happening in that scene and not moving around to hunt for a target somewhere. Let's take a look at the first example now. So here we have um, a scene in Marseille that I took earlier this year and I was intrigued here by this light. Uh, we have a lot of shadows in the shot, we have color in the light there, the red uh, I really liked and I also like how the light shines on these three poles in the foreground and how they cast a shadow. And all that I was missing in this shot was something moving into the light, which is interesting enough for me, um, brings more dynamic to the scene, but at the same time fits into um, this little corridor of light here. Um, so I was there for a while, I don't know how many minutes actually, and there were cars passing, there were um, motorbikes and scooters passing, um, and also people and then suddenly this lady I saw her in the background already um, and so I was just waiting until she came 
in this corridor of light and that was exactly what I was waiting for and I took the shot and uh, yeah so this is this photo I was really intrigued by the movement here that for me at least brings this additional excitement and dynamics into this picture now when it comes to fisherman as i said in the beginning you will stay in this one spot so you will have to spot under your control also you will have your camera and everything preset for the light conditions and the idea that you have so in this case for example with the lady in the corridor of light i knew that i want a moving object so obviously i needed a shutter speed that is high enough that i have the subject in focus uh, not being blurry so um, all of these things are kind of like set, um, plannable. Um, you can take your time with composition uh, because yes, you are in this spot and um, you, you pick the frame. So you have all the time in the world, um, more or less, to frame your picture. So let's take a look at another example. Same thing like in Marseille here. Uh, this is a scene from Kiev. I'm standing in front of a church here and I really, really liked that blue house and that blue sky and I was shooting Kodak Ultramax. I knew that the colors will pop. I like that the street curves a little bit here and I was hoping that something would happen here in the scene so I can take the shot and have these beautiful colors and uh, at the same time have some movement in the photo because just taking a photo of that house there with the green trees in the background was not enough for me. So in this case I waited quite a while in front of this church for something to happen. There were people with shopping bags moving into the frame. There were many cars coming uh, that kind of like disturbed me in the frame. There were people walking in the background in front of that blue building that were disturbing me. And I was constantly hoping for something exciting to be happening in the frame uh, quite close to me, but not distracted by, for example, a car or something in the background. And then I looked around and I saw this lady that you now see in the frame in this beautiful green dress walking. And I thought, oh, wow, I really hope she will walk in front of my camera. She would make an amazing addition to the photo. She would bring exactly the dynamics and the colors that I wanted in this shot into the frame because she repeats the green. And I was just hoping that there was no bike or car or anything happening um, or driving by while I was taking the shot. And lucky me, as you see, uh, nothing happened. She walked in front of the camera. I can take the shot and I'm really very, very happy with this shot. Um, so another typical example for me for a fisherman behavior. So let's take a look at the next shot. The next shot is a street scene in Zurich. So I was actually at a photo exhibition and when I walked out and I went to the tram station, I saw how the afternoon light was shining on the trams here in Zurich and I was completely intrigued by that. And I wanted to have a very symmetric shot of, a, of an old tram especially. We have also newer trams in Zurich. I didn't find them too exciting. They also have very, very large windows. So I had to wait for one of these old trams to um, come by. And I positioned myself in a way that when they stop at the tram stop, that I can have this, yes, very symmetric shot. So I had to wait for an old tram to come be in my shot and also hopefully something going on in the windows that makes the shot a little bit more exciting than just a tram or an empty tram uh, by itself. Let's take a look at the next shot. This is a typical water paddle example. I'm sure many of you have um, shot these types of photos where you see after the rain some water and some buildings or um, trees or something reflecting in the water. For me the same here, I saw the buildings, I saw the amazing reflections, this was in France. I also took a shot with just the water paddle and the um, buildings, but I found it quite boring, I just wanted to have it in case um, nothing is going on that I have at least a shot of this water here. But then I was standing there um, for a couple of minutes uh, hoping that someone would walk by in kind of like a diagonal way, cutting through the pictures. I just wanted the feet. I didn't want to have um, faces or anything. So I really um, was very close to the water paddle actually. 
And so, yeah, then these two gentlemen here walked into my frame and I'm very, very happy with the shot. I think for me at least, um, that's what makes this picture more exciting than just the water. And then the next example is um, architectural photography. So I also like to take photos of buildings, especially if they have an interesting architecture or symmetry. And this is an example of a building here in Zurich. And I found these patterns in the tiles very, very exciting. Um, the concrete at the bottom, very brutal. And um, I wanted to take this symmetrical shot, but for me here, the same thing. It was way too boring if there was nothing going on. So I was waiting also here for something to happen. There were some children playing, but they wouldn't move into the frame. There were people with bikes driving by, but never really nice enough or some couples. But then at some point, um, this guy showed up that you see here in the picture and he was walking here yeah, from the right to the left. And he had these kind of like grayish white pants that repeated the colors of the building, which was absolutely perfect for me. So I took the shot where you see him now. Yeah, I really like to have these dynamic um, parts in photos and to get them sometimes I have to wait quite a while. So here in this case is, let's say, easy and simple looking photo it took me at least five, six minutes for um, this to happen. And this was an early Saturday morning, I think, or maybe lunchtime Saturday. So there was not a lot going on in the scene. The last example I want to show you is from Rapperswil here in Switzerland. Um, I walked up to an old, um, I don't know, was it like a castle monastery? And I watched down from the stairs and I saw this kind of like composition of this entrance with the stairs and there were children playing and I liked this kind of like Z shape and I wanted to take a photo for a spread. So the idea behind this photo or the composition was to have something that can be printed on like a magazine, for example, with two pages where you can use one page for, for text or something. So basically to have a spread. So that's what I was composing for. And all I was hoping for was that the children are moving in such a way that I have one you know, on the left side of the spread and one on the right side of the spread. Now you can imagine how um, the scene was going on with the children playing. There were people walking through that gate um, with dogs back and forth. I was constantly hoping for this moment where there were just the children and not people walking by and at the same time hoping that by me waiting there for too long um, the children wouldn't disappear and just, just, just go somewhere else um, and I wouldn't have any shot at all. So I was very fortunate to get this moment in time where um, the little girl was standing there um, looking down at the Zurich Lake and the little boy uh, looking in her direction. So for me a very beautiful moment and it f paid off um, waiting there for a while. Now let's move on to the hunter behavior. So as I explained earlier, the hunter behavior is when you walk around or you run around and you take shots of things that you see very spontaneously and you need to be ready for anything. So here you usually do not have the scene under your control. Um, the light also changes a lot if you walk or depending on the situations that you are. So you need to be prepared to change your settings on your camera. Um, and also you don't have a lot of time because a lot of, a lot of the times um, these things that you want to capture, they, they just give you like, I don't know, a two, three second window of you taking the shot or basically forgetting about it. So the first example I want to show you is a lady that sits on the stairs here, very tired at Art Basel this year. Uh, she was charging the phone and she was sitting there um, and the light was shining so nicely on the stairs that I wanted to take the shot. So I immediately went down on my knees, um, had the camera ready and took this shot. So having said, having the camera ready. So if you're kind of like in this hunter behavior, what you want to do is you want to have your camera ready at any time. So you have it in your hands. This is not something where you have the camera in your bag, for example. So let's take a look at the next example. So here I was on a flea market in Zurich and I really liked how, um, first of all, the light was, but also this old Caravelle or Caravelle um, poster in the foreground with the lady looking over her shoulder and this guy was looking for something or browsing through the goods. 
So also here, I just had a couple of seconds going down on my knees, framing it, taking a shot, because also he was moving, I think two, three seconds later, he was just basically getting up and the shot would not have worked. So this was another example where I had to be very, very quick. The next example was also at Art Basel. I found it very funny how the people were here trying out VR to experience art. I wanted to capture this moment and I showed this photo in another video of mine um, to capture a moment in time. And um, also here there was a photographer present who took photos of these um, people. So I liked that he was in the frame and people experiencing VR maybe for the first time in their life. And then uh, the next shot is from Kiev. Um, the lady who was driving this cable car ended her shift, so we show. So she was getting up from her position in the, in a driver's chair, and um, I was there, saw that happen, framed it, and then by chance, this was absolutely not planned. There was this guy walking in the background that you see that is basically here by chance, perfectly framed in one of the back windows. So I really, really like the shot. I'm really happy that I was so lucky to uh, capture this moment in time. These are for me examples of the hunter and the fisherman behavior in my own photography. I really uh, think these two terms were quite uh, revealing for me. And I really am very grateful to being introduced to um, these two terms because I can um, make a lot out of them and I really hope that you enjoyed it or it makes you also think. Um, as you've seen in the hunter behavior, like the last couple of photos I showed you, this is where you really don't have a lot of time to compose. You don't have the light under your control. Um, you need to have a very good idea in your mind what you want to do. And if not, you need to be able to be very fast in focusing, reacting to the light uh, and the changing light situation. So um, yeah, totally different type of street photography. And um, I hope you enjoyed the photos. Let me know in the comments below what you think of these two terms or what you make out of these terms or what you uh, things I uh, think I didn't mention. Uh, with regards to these two terms. Let's now come to the last part of the video where I want to share with you the submissions I received for a challenge that I posted two videos ago when I was playing a street photography card game with a couple of friends of mine. Um, that was from the card deck, See the Bigger Picture. I will leave a link to the video in the description below if you wanna watch that video and how we played this photography card game. So in that video, I asked you, the viewers, if you want to submit um, your shots to one of the challenges there and the challenge was matching patterns. Now I want to share the submissions I received. It was uh, three in total and two of them were qualifying for the challenge to win one of these street photography card decks. And I'll explain to you in a second why only two of them qualify. I'm now going to show you the first submission from Peter Foote from the UK. He submitted two photos to the challenge. The first one is super nice, moody, I like the light, I like how um, these patterns from the windows are in the photo. I think the composition is really, really great and um, really well done, Peter, for this one. And then also the second uh, photo that he submitted, um, a stairway uh, spiraling, also repeating the pattern, um, really, really well done. Thank you, Peter, for your submission. The card deck is on its way to you. And the second submission was from Dragan Todorovsky, I hope I pronounced the name correctly, from North Macedonia. He submitted his colorful photo with these wooden structures and nice patterns in the backgrounds, also the shadows, I liked it a lot, the composition, the diagonals, the movement here, and then also repeating the pattern in um, the shirt or maybe the dress that the lady was wearing. So great shot also, Dragan, to you. Um, the Kartik is also on the way to you. And now we come to the third submission, which is from my girlfriend, Tetiana. She's uh, one of my biggest inspirations and supporters uh, for this channel and helped me build it up from the beginning. Also, some of the shots that you see from me from outside um, were filmed by her uh, oftentimes. And uh, some of you might already have seen her also in uh, photos in previous videos or on Instagram, maybe without knowing that um, Tetiana is my girlfriend. So let's take a look at these two photos that uh, Tetiana submitted. So here in this first shot, um, she saw this uh, zebra crossing 
and we were walking and by chance there was this van just passing with this kind of like zebra striping on the back and uh, she was also so lucky that there was this um, person on a bike coming into the frame to also give this movement so also here um, for me a great composition but it also showed me um, while watching her doing this how hard it actually is to um, do this challenge to find matching patterns and have them in a composition. So let's take a look at the second shot here. We see light falling through a door, um, producing these patterns on the ground, which then repeat itself on the trousers, and you have the same type of structure in the background where the stairs are to an entrance um, in Treviso in Italy to a uh, modern art exhibition. So it took Tatiana quite a while to shoot these two photos, so a lot of time has elapsed between uh, both of the shots. It was really difficult, as she was explaining to me, to find these matching patterns. So, But uh, thanks a lot, Tatiana, that I could share your photos here on YouTube. Again, thank you so much, Peter and Dragan, for your submissions. And Tatiana, of course, also many, many thanks. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching it and supporting the channel with likes and subscriptions. I truly appreciate it. And please let me know in the comments below um, what you think or if you have any questions. Um, see you next time. Laters.